you. In this tutorial, I want to deep dive into this vending machine project again and show you exactly how I launch DQMH modules for an application. So if I run this launcher, I'm actually launching five different DQMH modules in a set order. And before I launch some modules, I need other modules to gather some data and pass it to those modules. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going through how I launch these modules and the startup routine. So let's dive straight into it. So in this application, if we double click on the launcher and open it up, we actually come across a state machine. Now the VI I'm showing you here, I've created as a template. So I can go to file, new from template, it then create a new launcher sequence like you see here. And you can see details of how to make a new template VI on the NI website. And I'll leave a link to this paper in the description. But in this launcher VI, you can see it's a simple state machine and we start off by hiding the front panel of the launcher itself so the user won't see this dialog box. I then go through the different states. So launching the splash screen, configuring some modules, reading a configuration file, launching some modules, launching dynamic modules, etc. However, for this application, I'm not launching a splash screen, so I just leave this case blank. In fact, I only start adding functionality in the launching startup modules state where you can see I have the model DQMH module VIs here of start module, synchronize module events and show panel. And because this is the highest level VI that exists in our application, there is nothing to wire these broadcast events to. However, if I wanted to, I could put an event case in the state machine and then wire the dynamic terminals up to these broadcast events. But I don't need to in this application. And then the state machine will carry on. You can see it's very straightforward. And in this application, we're not utilizing all of the states, only a couple of them. So really, if we flattened out that state machine, all it is doing is this, hiding the front panel, launching the module, showing the panel, event checking for errors. And if we run this simple VI, you can see it launches the application. But let's now have a look at what it is launching. So if we go to the model DQMH module, and click on main. To open that up, we have an application shell with four different sub panels. And if we look on the block diagram, notice how we're launching the stock module straight away. And then we're using the obtain broadcast events for registration VI for the view, the keypad, and the money DQMH module. You've probably noticed that I have a sub panel reference wired to the start module VI. That's because I want to share the sub panel reference with the DQMH module I'm about to launch. That way, the launched DQMH module will be able to add itself to that sub panel. So if I double click this sub panel reference, you can see that it's linked to this sub panel that's on the block diagram. There are two ways of linking a VI and a sub panel. You can either share the sub panel reference with the VI, like I'm using in this example, or you can share the VI reference with the sub panel. It will work in either direction. So inside start module, I've added a new sub panel reference to the front panel and wired it to the connector pane. And then I'm using the control value set invoke method on the VI reference to be launched. When using the control value set method, which you will find here in the menu, this is going to set the value of the control that you name here with the value you specify. And if we head over to the main VI of stock, what we are essentially doing is wiring directly from here to the front panel. And notice how I haven't had to connect a sub panel reference to the connector pane. In fact, most of the time I make the control hidden by right clicking it on the block diagram and hiding the control. That way there's no front panel resemblance. So to dock this VI's front panel into the sub panel reference of the calling module, I'm using this VI here, which you'll find on my GitHub page, where what I'm doing is inserting the VI reference into the sub panel. I'm doing some quality checks beforehand. And if there's an error, I return the VI to its previous state, but you can explore the code in more detail on my GitHub page. So that was a really straightforward demonstration of how we can send data from the start module VI into the module main VI. 
let's head back to where we're launching these modules. So we're launching the stock module right at the start. And we're launching the other three modules in the module did init case for the stock module. So only when the stock module has launched, do I want to launch the other modules. That's because I want to see if there's any stock available in my vending machine before launching the other modules. And you can see that I have a label here called product items and that's going into the keypad module. This is going to allow me to update the keypad with the stock items. Let's see how I was able to send custom data with module did init, which is a broadcast event that comes with the DQMH. If we go to where the module did init broadcast event is actually being sent, it's in the initialize case of the DQMH modules and it sits just here. And the standard inputs of this VI are the origin, so the module name, and whether it initialized or not. And that is normally a true constant. However, I've changed the code. So if there are no products available, I get an empty array here. And if I have an empty array, I don't want to confirm that this module initialized correctly. So I'm going to say no, it didn't initialize. I've added a third input up here called product names. So if we open up this VI, I added a third input called product names and to add it to this cluster, I had to right click the DQMH argument, open type definition, then I could simply add this array of strings called product names to the type def. From there, those changes would propagate throughout my application because it's a type definition. So in the model module where I've registered for this event, I could just click and drag down, look for product names. Whilst we're in this event case, the last thing I want to show you is the status updated broadcast message. This broadcast message is super helpful when trying to debug our DQMH framework. Essentially, we can use this broadcast message by clicking and dragging from the project to say that something notable has happened, i.e. the status of our module has changed. So for example, here I've said launching submodules. However, if stock didn't initialize for some reason, I've sent another message saying ever launching stock. If we go to the model tester, we'll see this in action. So let's open up the model tester, run it and start the module. Notice how we have the first entry is model initialization succeeded. The second is launching sub modules. And this is the message we gave it in this case here. I really hope this tutorial was useful and beneficial to you all. We went through quite a few little things today, but all of the code is available on my GitHub page. There's links in the description below. And as always, please like, comment and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss upcoming tutorials. And until next time, happy lab viewing.